Thank you. Is America worth fighting for? Let's get fired up! You know, the problem is people have been putting their faith in government when they need to put their faith in the people, the sovereign people who believe in God, who have faith in God, and who look to Him for guidance about where America ought to go. Don't believe that our salvation is in government, as liberals do. Utopian schemes always fail, they always have. American history and world history. And that's what the Tea Party is all about. Restoring America's ideals, restoring the power of the people. Not just saying this is some chant, some phony bromide about returning power to the people, but truly our government is in warp speed towards socialism, toward Marxism. We have to restore our power and our sovereignty. The grassroots movement is not tops down. It is not astroturf. It is completely spontaneous from the ground up, and it's happening all over the country because people have arisen, and they're tired of what's going on. They're horrified about what's going on. We are not domestic terrorists. We are not little Timothy McVeigh's. Now, liberals might, must be because they're always projecting onto us. Our speech does not trigger violence. Our speech triggers peaceful revolution. So this, we, we, have, we are here to protest a government that is out of control, that is not listening to the people, that doesn't care about the will of the people. The public sector is growing at the expense of the private sector. The government is bankrupting the nation. The, the public sector employees are making twice as much on average as the private sector. It's the only area growing. Obama has not created or saved three million jobs. He's lost a net of three million jobs. So there's a jobs gap of over six million. And this guy just keeps coming back for more of the same. It's pretty delusional. The federal government government is at war with the states, as we know in Arizona, because Arizona wants to protect its sovereignty and protect its borders. Nancy Pelosi, bring it. <laughs> wants to protect its sovereignty, and it wants to help the federal government enforce its own laws. It specifically precludes racial profiling uh, in that law. It was written by a law professor, Chris Kobach, to pass constitutional muster, and they know, they know it does not fail the constitutional test, but they want to have pure amnesty so they can change the demographics and people will vote Democrat. Did I say Democrat? Oh, I'm so sorry. I mentioned it. Oh, party. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I got carried away. The government is picking winners and losers. The way Obama restructured, it's one thing, everybody talks about him taking over private industry, but what he did afterwards was worse. He restructured uh, this new organization, reorganization, so that his union buddies would get 50 cents on the dollar, even though they're unsecured creditors, and the secured creditors would get some 20 percent. That is pure uh, thuggery in the United States. No constitutional restraints. They dismissed the new Black Panther case. Even though it was a cinch-lock case that had been won by default, and you all know about this, and the reason they did it, the reason they did it according to Christian Adams and other lawyers on the inside who were so disgusted that they retired is because they said it, under Obama, you, there's an unwritten policy, Obama and Holder, that whites cannot be the dis uh, victims of black voter intimidation. We don't want race-conscious justice. We want blind justice in the United States. Obama attacks and slanders private citizens. He declared war on Fox News. This is unprecedented. He, he declared war on my brother. He declares war on people at CNBC, uh, Rick Santelli, and he never looks back, and yet he talks about other people being bullies. But you know, it's the Alinskyite tactic, tactic of picking, isolating, and demonizing targets. Some of the other speakers have talked about it. They don't ever argue substantive issues because they can't win on the facts. They have to personalize it.
it and demonize somebody like fat cat bankers or insurance companies who are making obscene profits when they're not making obscene profits. So it becomes us against them from a guy who claims he's post-partisan and post-divisive. No, he is completely hyper, super, jumbo, Democrat, completely partisan. You know, can you imagine, can you imagine a president of the United States summoning executives to Washington and berating them about their rates that they charge, or brochures that they send out about losing coverage under Obamacare, and they threaten to sue them because they're exercising their First Amendment rights and, and issuing required filings. Well, they had to back off of that. They didn't want to be embarrassed. But it's not enough. They have a blog squad in the Department of Justice which goes around trolling websites as if they're private citizens, they masquerade as private citizens, and they file a, a post affirmative supporting uh, posts uh, for the government and pretending they're private citizens. Now imagine that deceit. Imagine what kind of Stalinism that is. Imagine a president who says through Robert Gibbs, I'm going to keep my boot on the throat of BP. And this is a company, by the way, that had already admitted its liability. That's Chicago thug politics, too. Or I'm looking for someone's rear end to kick. Where, where do we get this kind of talk? And, and the libs all told us about how sophisticated this guy was. Don't, I, don't do a lot of talking, those of you who created this mess. I don't want you to do a lot of talking. See, the government, this government will not honor its constitutional restraints. You saw what happened with Obamacare. The people manifestly did not want this program. They defeated uh, the Massachusetts, Massachusetts Senate uh, challenger and Scott Brown won, and that was clearly a personal referendum against Barack Obama. And when people expected him to go before the State of the Union and show contrition and say, I'm going to move it out of the center, I hear you. No, instead he said, I want you to take another look at my plan. That is staggering arrogance. So, Obama will not listen. He's dividing us along economic and racial lines. He's a president who doesn't like America. And don't make any mistake about that. He doesn't like America. He has a grudge against America. His wife thinks America is downright mean. Am I being mean by pointing that out? She said it. I didn't say it. How comfortable do you feel having a president and first lady who can't stand this country and its founding ideals? He wants to cut America down to size because he doesn't share our values. So he's giving away $140 billion to the IMF for redistribution to third world nations. Now when he was challenged on this, he has no executive authority to do it, and Congress expressly forbid him from doing it. He said, I have plenary power over foreign policy. And you folks, that's Orwellian. This is not foreign policy, it's foreign aid. He just does whatever he wants, just as when he told John Kyle, Senator of Arizona, who said, maybe, Mr. President, you ought to put a freeze on that discretionary, on stimulus spending money that hasn't been sent. So four of his cabinet secretaries sent simultaneous letters uh, to Kyle threatening to cut off Arizona's portion of the stimulus money. Can you guys imagine? And he did the same thing in California. I don't have enough time. The only reason I have notes is because I'm going to go three hours without them. I'm almost done. <laughs> Folks, America is not over. We're fighting back. We cannot get cocky, though. We cannot be complacent. This is so serious. People who say, I'm hyperventilating, or I'm exaggerating, or I'm hysterical. Guilty. Guilty. I am hysterical about the fact that we won't be able to bequeath our kids and our grandchildren the freest, most prosperous, strongest nation in the history of the world like our parents and grandparents bequeathed us. That's what we're hysterical about. The major obstacle, as I see it, is our side. We're going to whip the fannies of these Democrat enablers of Barack Obama. But the main problem is our guys not having the courage of their convictions and, and falling away once they're in office. So we have to hold their feet to the fire. Like We need all these legislators to be like Steve King. We have to, they have to have the courage and the confidence in their convictions. We need to 
quit allowing the super minority of liberals, the strident, vocal, loud, liberal minority to keep running things and intimidating